Okay, I'm going to show you how I make Plaid in Photoshop. We're going to go new, and I like to do it in inches. This makes more sense to me. I do 2 inches by 2 inches. Okay, and then this is just going to be a crazy Plaid with random colors. So, um, let's go down here. Okay, so I'm first going to select the color, and then I'm going to, you can either use the line tool, but I prefer the rectangle tool. So we're going to select the rectangle tool, and you can either do one line and just duplicate it and have them all the same size, or you can do it one by one. So here I'll do one by one, and just lay that down, and then I'm going to move this down a touch. Well, here we go. We're, I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to select a new color. And then I'm going to lay another line down, smaller than the last one. I'm going to do a new layer. Pick a new color. Uh, just, I'm just doing it random distances apart. New layer. Let's do a little piece on in there. Do a tiny one. Um, I am still learning, oh, sorry my dog decided in the background, um, <clears throat> I'm still learning plots too, um, sometimes they turn out really great, and sometimes they turn out not so great, so it's a learning process, it just, you know, some of them turn out better than others. Um, let's go with a piece of paint to end it. So, I just did a bunch of rectangles, piece the color, new layer. Um, or I could, like I have this selected, I could do Command J, and then do my Move tool, and then if I want them, like, the same distance apart, or however I want to do it, um, I can do that, and then I can use Select the Color, and use the Paint Bucket, which is a right-click under Gradient, the Paint Bucket. It'll say that it'll have the dashed line say no, and then it says it has to be rasterized. Okay, click it and change it to a different color. Um, I'm going to delete that. So you don't have to fill the square. You don't even have to do this many. You can do three lines. You can do two lines. You could do them all the same width apart. You could do them different width. Um, let's see if I wanted to go here and do that. And then I can move that, and I can move that. So now I'm just moving them just to show you. Um, it doesn't matter at all if there's a same distance apart or if there's lots of space in between them. It depends on what you like. So <clears throat> I suggest just playing with it and seeing what gives you the best result. So I'm going to hide my white background layer. Now I'm going to go to Edit, no, Image, Trim, and then it'll be selected on, it should be selected on top left pixel color. Um, that'll be the white or the transparent. Mm -hmm. And say OK. So it just trimmed it down. Now I'm going to go back to Image, Canvas Size, and so it's up. 1.47. If I want to be, so let's select this one, move it, okay, they are 0 0.07 inches apart. So if I add 0.14 um, inches to the canvas size, size, it'll be equal because we're going to define this as a pattern as a square. So I want to add 0.14 to this, so I'm just going to do 0.287, okay, and then that added the correct amount on each side. So then we're going to take our crop tool and go to square, and it selects the square, and Click OK. So now you have a square pattern, which is easiest to do the plots with. And now we're going to go to Edit, Define Pattern, 
okay, you can name it, I just don't. So now we've defined this pattern. Now we're going to go to File, New, and I'm going to make the canvas size 12 inches by 12 inches with 300 resolution. Now I'm going to come down here and create a new layer. Go to my Paint Bucket tool again, and instead of Foreground, we're going to select Pattern. And since we just defined this as a pattern, it'll show up here. And then you just click on your screen, and there, the first pattern that it gives you will just be stripes. So if you just want to make stripes, this is a great way to make stripes. Now I'm going to duplicate these stripes so I can get the plot. So control J to duplicate. You see that it popped up here. And then control T to free transform. You can tell them in free transform because these are up here. I can't select anything over here because I'm in free transform. So I'm going to hold the shift key so it doesn't distort my image. And it keeps my, when you are spinning an image, you want to hold shift because it keeps it at, I think it's 30 or 45 degree angle. So I'm going to hold shift or 15 degree angle. Yeah, so 15 degrees, it'll let you go at a time. We're going to do 90 degrees. So you see down there by my arrow, it says 90 degrees. I'm going to let go. It shifted over here a little bit, which isn't a huge deal because I don't typically use that. Um, I'm just going to center it, though, for the video. Okay, so that's pretty cute, but it doesn't have a good blend. So over here, you have your blend mode. Now we're going to go from normal to multiply. And it's important that you're on the top layer when you do multiply. So multiply, and there we have a beautiful path. So if I would have done the darker pink, Center and if the other colors would have shown up more and it wouldn't have looked so boxy. I usually um, merge my layers together by hitting Control Shift E and that puts it all together. So then I can do Control A to select all and Control C to copy. So and then I'll paste that onto my nail 1A template and show you there you go. <clears throat> okay, so okay, so this is what I do all of my designing on. I'm gonna paste that there, and then I say Control V to paste, and then Control T to free transform. And you have to shrink it down a bit because you made it pretty big, or I just made it pretty big. But that gives you room to play with it. So if you're looking for a bigger pod print like that, you can stay there. I typically shrink it down and spin it another, what, 45 degrees? Let's see. Yep, 45 degrees is usually I spin it and go there. And then you can play with it if you want to shrink it down. Remember, every time I shrink or spin, I'm holding shift the whole time. So always, always, always hold shift while you're doing anything with free transform so you don't distort the image. Um, I can show you if I if I don't hold shift, well, you want to do that. So if I don't hold shift, I can accidentally do funky things to it, and you don't want that. So control Z to undo, hold shift, and it keeps the proportions the same. And that is how I make